Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. In this video, we are going to talk about custom generic platforms. Now, in the previous video, you saw how we could take generic platforms that were provided by FSX at War, and also you also saw that, that we could create it, then uh, convert it to a real platform and spread it throughout, throughout the world where we needed that type of generic platform. Well, today I will show you how to add uh, to add your own generic custom generic platform so maybe there is a platform that you need that's not offered currently by FSX at war or you want uh, you don't you haven't found it in somebody else's uh, shared packs therefore you create your own so you learn how to create a generic platform from our own scenery and uh, that will be a BGL file with XML files and uh, why do we care? So this allow us to create custom platform to use or share uh, based on our needs. And where would I use it? Uh, use it anywhere to create a specific platform look that I want that is not currently offered by anyone or FSX at war. Okay, the overview of the process is relatively simple. Uh, it was will be pretty quick since uh, the previous videos I showed you how to add objects and so on and so forth so I won't spend much time on that and you've seen me add some uh, real platform so it's going to be pretty quick so we'll create a, create a scenery using AD uh, or XBuilder or the, or the sim tool of your choice in this case here I've used I've got AD to work with and create it where it will be out of the way so in other words once I put the coordinates where it's going to be an ADE. You want to put it out of the way so that it doesn't interfere with your other scenery if you happen to uh, declare the pack that it's a the declare the folder that's in, into. Uh, add your scenery to your generic folder and then if you add your generic folder to FSX in order to see it. And once you're able to see it you add your scenery to your generic platform and that's in FSX at war. And once you're able to see it in FSX, it's in your FSX at war uh, uh, interface. Then you can add the, the equipment on the platform. Now I'm making some assumptions here going into this video. I mean, I am assuming that you've already viewed my previous videos, one, two, and three, because you uh, if you have viewed the videos, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And you've created your own pack already. So you have your scenery packs. Uh, you have basically your two folders. That's what I'm after. The, the spe your pack specific folder and your pack underscore generic folder. And you have already created BGL scenery for use. Now, one thing that uh, you must have, if you, uh, so let's say, for example, you take, well, let's talk about ADE. So if I create an ADE platform, uh, ADE uh, scenery, what I need to put in is at least one uh, scenery object from the object library, whether it be a light post or what have you, but you need to have one, otherwise it will not work when you try to add it to FSX at war. Now, uh, with that being said, that uh, you can start with a clean slate. You put a bunch of aprons, fence around it, put some light posts, or even a, a small gate or some sim object or some uh, scenery object, and then everything should be fine. So now let's jump in and let's go take care of uh, this and show you how to add a generic scenery to, FSX, to your FSX at War Pack. Okay, so in order to create a generic scenery, we need an actual base or a scenery to start from. So in my folder, I have some scenery folder here in which I have sceneries. Now I have sceneries that were created by a gentleman called uh, Majestic, who's part of the FSX at War team. And we're going to use what he's provided us. And let's take a look at the, the scenery itself and ADE and all I'm trying to do is to basically get the information from it to, so that I can find it. So if I look at the properties, the aircraft, uh, the airport properties, 
it says FAC3. So when I look at my FSX, I should be able to find it under FSA3. And so let's go take a look at what the platform looks like in FSX. But first, before we can do this, as part of our process, we need to take those files and actually put them into our generic folder. So I will copy those files and go into my flight sim. So in my case here, I'll use FSX. Go into my add-on scenery, and my pack name is Blue Zone Pack One Underscore Generic One. That's the one I want to add the scenery to, and not the one that says just Pack One. So I'll add my scenery to the scenery folder of that uh, folder itself. There we go. So now in my pack, as I mentioned, I have Pack One. Blue Zone Pack 1 and Blue Zone Pack 1 underscore generic. Now, I added the files here, but it's not, doesn't mean that FSX will be able to see it because I need to add it to FSX as well. So if you recall in my previous videos, we added the Blue Zone Pack 1, but not the Blue Zone Pack 1 generic. You only need to add this generic pack, the generic folder, when you're actually going to do work in FSX itself. So what you want to do is go to your FSX and go to your settings and go to your scenery library. And now you see here I have Blue Zone Pack 1 actually listed, but you don't see my Blue Zone Pack 1 underscore generic folder. So I need to add area. I go find that folder, which is right here. Okay, so I open the folder. And now I do have it added into my scenery. So I just click OK to update the databases. And then once it's done, I should be able to go look at it. Okay, so now I have my scene reloaded. So let's go into free flight. And I'm going to select uh, Bob here. And let me select uh, where we want to go. And the airport ID, I said was FAC3. And you see it shows up as generic factory 3. So let's go ahead and click OK. And I want to make sure that it's daytime, and it does show daytime here in GMT. So I'll click OK. I'll click Fly Now, and we're going to go take a look at it and see what it looks like. Now Majestic's done a great job with that little uh, platform. So it's essentially a footprint that you can use, in this case here, for a factory. And the one thing that's important, you've got to make sure that you design at least one object, whether it's a tree or what have you. And you can see here the custom ju uh, scenery has some palm trees. So obviously if it's going to be an area where there's no palm trees, you'll have to, you'll, you would need to alter that. So, so here's the platform. Let's take a look at it. Okay, and you see this is a platform that we're going to populate for our generic scenery. Now what I've mentioned, if you look, I have my, uh, I actually have my uh, slew with the shift Z information and I'm putting myself at the uh, zero degrees or 360. Reason being is if I'm not at 360 when I try to place objects and I rotate them, uh, it'll be difficult because going, str going straight will be going sideways and so on and so forth. So be mindful of that. You want to be at 360 or zero and then it'll be a lot easier for you. The next step in our process is to go into FSX at war and add the scenery that we added to FSX as a generic scenery uh, platform. So now let's go into our FSX at war under Tactical Reference Editor. And here I'm going to go into my own pack. And you want to do the same, go into your own pack. And we want to select the generic platform. So if I go to generic platform here, and I'm going to add a generic platform. Now notice there's a red circle. Red circles are our friend. It tells us what the issues are. There's no path platform type selected and the FSX scenery is not found. So that's, uh, that's very uh, useful information and you can clearly see that that's the case here. So let's start filling out the information. First of all, uh, his real platform will remain unchecked because it's not a real platform. We're creating a generic platform is above FSX scenery will be checked because we whatever platform we create will sit on top of FSX scenery. The next one in the list is the file name. So now let's click on the ellipse button here and let's go find the platform that we added. So we added 
uh, generic factory 3 and you see here it shows up whatever that's in my generic folder and go ahead and select it now it says generic factory 3 in the name here every time you see a name field you can put uh, it's okay to use spaces and you want to use something that's uh, that's actually that actually makes sense because in the future FSX at war will actually uh, use that name to provide a, at the end of uh, the the theater. So let's say, for example, that uh, you destroy the this uh, this factory here. So I'm going to call it uh, uh, armament uh, armament factory. So let's say that you destroy the whole armament factory. It would say armament factory and a triple E armament factory. Let's say. Uh, or whatever. So you, you put the name Armament Factory, then this way when it's destroyed, we'll say Armament Factory is destroyed instead of uh, saying Gen underscore Factory underscore three is destroyed. So try to use meaningful names and it'll make sense. Now, the next one is you want to select a category that applies to your generic scenery. Uh, in our case here, it exists already. So we'll select Factory from FSX at Warpack 1. If you did not find the, the the category that you the the type that you need here, you could create your own type. It's uh, not within the scope of this uh, tutorial, but you can go and then look at the documentation, and you can create your own type. And then you see how it fills out uh, the type name and the type pack name. The ICAO code you do not need that ICAO code because it's not an airport. Now, much like the previous videos, uh, it already knows which position you've put the the um, the scenery in. And uh, if you notice here, well, by looking at the uh, at the position, it's uh, the it's put. You can put it just about anywhere. People won't see it because it downloads the generic uh, scenery folder normally. But I, I recommend putting it elsewhere so that if you have to somewhere that's not in your way. So this way if you have to work with it at the same time as you have your generic pack loaded, you won't have any interference or issues. So all we have to do here is copy position from FSX scenery and it will go get the information from FSX scenery and it's actually in the pack. Then uh, it actually clears all the error that we had. Now the next step is to act add the uh, generic platform equipment but the first thing I want to do first is just exit out of FSX at war just so that it says the work that I've done so I quit I quit and I quit then ask me do you want to cha save the changes say yes so now at this point your changes are saved your platform is actually in your generic scenery but there's nothing on it so the next step will be to go in and add equipment on it. Okay, so the generic platform is into our pack and I've actually went ahead and added equipment. Uh, we're not gonna go through that because I've already showed you how to do this in uh, the video number two. But in any case, uh, I've added a bunch of piece of equipment in here. And you'll notice there's uh, there are some yellows and there are some greens. So the yellows basically indicate that it's a specific object in the list of uh, objects that I picked. And the green are categories that contain multiple objects. So now let's take a look at the, the actual uh, categories here, the green ones. So if I look at the green ones here, if you look to the right, you're gonna see that the barrack, it's a barrack and if I actually use a drop down, there's two different kinds of barracks. There's a brown one, and there's a green one. So what that means is that when, if I use these categories, these three buildings here will come up randomly as a green barrack or a tan looking barrack. Same holds true with the, the storage, the storage shed that I have here. It can have this view or this type. So it's got two different types of storage uh, building here and therefore when I actually start my uh, campaign it will randomly choose one of those two unless I do something spe special and I will show you that and the same for this tractor here where it has the different 
different look. One is an empty tractor and one is not, not so empty. So anyway, so that's how those uh, categories or specific piece of equipment actually work. If you look at specific piece of equipment, there's only one. So when you do your design, and uh, what you want to do is there's some recommendations here to make it uh, uh, proof. First thing you want to do is always pick the most important pieces of your of your uh, scenery. In my case, the four buildings are the most important ones, right? And uh, so what? Uh, and if I look at my four buildings, I have a, a plant for rocket fuel, explosive chemical plant, and weapon assembly building, and weapon storage building. Well, the rocket fuel plant and the explosive chemical plants are pretty critical. So what I can do is I can make it so that it has an occurrence of uh, 100. So if you see the occurrence field, 100 means, uh, no, sorry, a weight of 100, meaning that uh, it is important and I'll give it a weight of 100. Uh, my explosive chemical plant is also important. I'll give it a weight of 100. Now I have my two other buildings, which are the next most important uh, part of my uh, of my scenery. Uh, uh, so the the other two buildings are basically uh, assembly and storage. Well, Finch, if those were destroyed, I could probably assemble elsewhere and store it elsewhere. So I'll give them a, a lower weight for the weapons assembly to let's say uh, I'll give it 80 because it, it's still important. So you see what I'm doing here, and I'm basically assigning a weight to to these uh, different piece of equipment, so that uh, uh, in the future, when FSXL War actually gives you a overview of the results, then those weight will make will mean something. So now those employee quarters uh, can select a weight that's less important in the building. So let's say uh, we give it a weight of 50. And another weight of 50. And you get the, the idea of what I'm trying to do here in the weight of 50. So now, notice how I created, in my head, I knew which ones was the most important, which ones the least important. So now the storage part here, I'm going to give it a 40. And, and lastly, the, the truck, I'll give it a 20. So now I have the weight set appropriately. Now with that being said, you see how many objects I have here. You probably want to keep that under 200 because these objects have to be cached and therefore you want to make sure that uh, it doesn't cause any performance issue. So keep it under uh, 200 objects, uh, whether it's in one scenery or multiple scenery put together. So that's a good guideline. So now we have uh, another field that we need to contend with is uh, how often do we want uh, the objects to show up? And what I mean by this is there's the occurrence, right? So I have an occurrence of, uh, if I have an occurrence of 100, every time I start a campaign, I should, let me rephrase, every time I create a campaign, then it will randomly show up or not show up based on my occurrence level. Occurrence level of 100 means it's gonna show up every single time. So my four buildings, I definitely want them to show up because they're the critical part of my design. But my employee quarter, maybe there's one or two that I don't want. So let's say uh, maybe I want uh, just uh, the first two are critical. And uh, let's see the third one. Maybe I want the third one to show up at 50% of the time. So I can change my occurrence to 50. And it's hard to probably hard to see for you there, but I changed my cursor fifty. Where that means that every time I create a a, uh, a a campaign, it will it will show up one out of every two times, fifty percent of the time, it will show up in my scenery. Uh, my part storage, uh, this one I, I can give it a occurrence of sixty. And I'm just randomly picking numbers here, but it, it will keep it ran, uh, keep it. Uh, randomized and at the truck I assign it a 30% so we'll keep it uh, randomized so therefore if you have your scenery uh, actually go uh, loaded in multiple places as real platform they'll look different every time somebody create a campaign so create some uh, interesting randomness 
So now I've changed these things here and let's go take a look uh, what it looks like in FSX. So first of all, I'm going to change the size of this here and I'll bring up our FSX to take a look at the scenery. So now you see I'm looking at the three buildings here. Now what's interesting is that the building you can, while you're actually looking in FSX, you can actually change the building to see what stuff would look like. See how I change the category? There would be brown or green. And you can also uh, do the same thing for uh, any categories. You can look at the transport truck and change it in here. So now if I look in the, my FSX, see how it changed the view, the, the way it looks based on uh, what I select. So let me just go in slow mode here. Let's take a look at the, our scenery overall. And let's take a see, so you can see the scenery, what it looks like. And those are the building I selected. Now I could have a lot more inf stuff on here, but I'm just trying to keep the video a uh, sh little bit short. Now there's another thing that we can do. So there's another field in here that's called groups. So the field, the group field, so let's say the, the three uh, employee quarters that I have here. So if I select a group field and I select uh, a group and I give it a, a name. Uh, so let's say I take the first two, I call it my, uh, my my group and it could be any name and the next one I'll call it my group as well now what will happen is you notice the third one I'll leave alone so I have three different groups three different uh, buildings here and the first two are part of my group and the second uh, the third one is part of no groups and what that means is that when I actually generates the the uh, employee quarters, the first one that generates is going to select green or tan. So let's say, for example, you select tan, right? Now, the second one will generate, it would want to create uh, generate green or tan, but because it's part of a group, it will pick whatever the first one selected. So if the first one was tan, the second one will be tan. So that group will ensure that these two that we made part of the group will always be uh, the same and the third one will be totally randomized because it's not part of the group so I hope that makes sense but that's how you use the group now if you look at my documentation I was talking about uh, doing the same thing with planes if you if you've looked through the objects you'll see that planes have uh, static fighters for example have uh, American planes they have uh, Russian planes so using a group, it would generate the, the first plane would determine what the second plane would be if they're part of the same group. But now you may want to discriminate between uh, just American planes or just uh, Russian planes. And you can do that using, uh, in a the theater area, using inventory and, and defining what is U.S. planes and what is uh, the planes for uh, American, uh, sorry what is US planes or Russian planes. So you can actually create, use inventory to discriminate further and then use grouping to create stuff that will be the same uh, so that you can control your design. So that's about it for uh, adding the objects and actually uh, uh, how to use groups and the occurrence and the weight and you can really control your design uh, nicely with those features. So that concludes our uh, creating a generic platform in FSX at War. I hope this uh, video was useful to you. And uh, as always, thank you. Uh, subscribe if you and hit like if you if you like it. And uh, that's it for now. Blue over and out.